Okay, so now that we've looked at the definition of big O notation, let's see how we can actually apply this definition to show that one function is big O of another function. Okay, so in particular, we're going to look at the following example. So let's show that f of x equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 is big O of x squared. Okay, so remember that all we need to do is find witnesses for this. So we need to find a constant c and a constant k so that our function f of x is less than or equal to c times x squared for every x bigger than k. Okay, so there are two different ways we can do this, and I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, and there may be more as well. Okay, so let's begin by comparing each of the elements within this polynomial with our function x squared, because what we need to do is to figure out how many x squared, so a multiple of x squared, which will make this function less than or equal to x squared, right, a after some point. So we know that if x is strictly bigger than 1, then in particular, x will be strictly less than x squared. Because if we take this inequality and multiply both sides by x, we get this inequality, right? Multiplying by this, we get x squared bigger than 1 times x is x. So that results in this inequality here. And moreover, we know that 1 will be strictly less than x squared in this case, because squaring a function is bigger as well. So we can also look at 1 less than x less than x squared. And so that is where we get each of these inequalities. So now notice when x is bigger than 1, then our function f of x equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 is also going to be bigger than 1 and in fact, and so positive. So this inequality holds just because we're considering x is greater than 1. And now using these inequalities we have found above, we see that x squared is obviously less than or equal to itself. 2x will be less than or equal to 2x squared by simply multiplying both sides of this inequality by 2. And 1 is strictly less than x squared here. So that is why we have this inequality here. And then just summing the coefficients on each of these x squareds, we get that 0 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to 4x squared for every x greater than 1. So this means that c equal to 4 and k equal to 1 are witnesses that show that f of x is big O of x squared. And I encourage you to draw the graphs of each of these functions, x squared plus 2x plus 1, x squared and 4x squared, and see how 4x squared is going to dominate our f of x when x is greater than 1. Alternatively, though, we could look at a different inequality. So instead of comparing each of these values with x squared in this way and and keeping the coefficients of each of them separate, so comparing x, x squared, and 1 with x squared, we can instead compare each of them separately, so x squared, 2x, and 1. So in particular, what does this mean? So we know that when x is greater than 2, if we multiply this inequality by x on both sides, we have that 2x is less than or equal to x squared, or x squared is strictly greater than 2x squared. So that inequality holds. And moreover, if x is greater than 2, then we still know that 1 is less than x squared. Okay, so again, since x is greater than 2, we know that our f of x is going to be positive, and so we don't need to worry about taking the absolute value. And then using these inequalities above, we again know that x squared is less than x squared. In this case, we know that 2x is less than or equal to x squared, and moreover, 1 is less than or equal to x squared. So combining the coefficients or adding the coefficients on each of these x squareds, we get that our function f of x is less than or equal to 3x squared when x is greater than 2. So the coefficients c equal to 3 and k equal to 2 are also witnesses that f of x is big O of x squared. Keep in mind that we only need to find one example, so whichever makes more sense to you is the one that you can use. So you do not have to. have to use both. So as you will see, as we try and prove or determine the relationship between various functions in terms of the big O notation, the following display of the growth of functions will be very useful. So notice that 
as we go up, each of the functions are growing faster um, at a particular point in time at least. So at the point x equal to 8, we know that all of these functions um, in this order are growing faster. Um, and notice that as soon as we get past 4, this is also the case. So this um, display of these growth of functions will be very useful to you when trying to prove that various functions are big O of other functions. And you can use various inequalities here um, in order to solve problems or examples using big O notation.